Hi, Peter Charles here, Fooked for Life Fly Fishing. And today let's look at fishing wet flies. Uh, and in this video, I'm going to look at a variety of methods, not just one. I mean, typically we uh, know about casting roughly 45 degrees across and downstream, letting it swing across, pulling it back up, maybe a couple more casts, take a step, do the same thing. That's typical of uh, wet fly fishing. Um, nothing wrong with it. I've caught loads of fish doing it, and if you read any of the uh, books of any of the uh, past masters, a lot of them will talk about doing exactly this. In fact, I think it was Falkus who said uh, he'd rather be in a deep conversation with a friend uh, when a fish hits. He doesn't want to do anything, he just wants to let it swing. Neems was the same opinion, just let it swing. Uh, I tend to be more active with my wet fly presentations. So we're gonna look at some of them. It's not an exhaustive list, you can do other things as well, but we're gonna look at a variety of scenarios and how I handled it. Um, I was using a variety of wet flies in this video. Uh, the Cahill wet, uh, where you see that smooth flat water, it's a Cahill wet. Uh, and I was using uh, another, oh, I can't remember the other one. Uh, it's a little small mayfly style wet fly that I was using in the, uh, the small stream video part of the video. So first off, let's look at the flies I have here in front of me. Generally speaking, if you see a tail on a wet fly, it's meant to imitate a mayfly or it could imitate a small bait fish. I mean, this one right here is more of a bait fish pattern than a, than a small mayfly. Um, if it doesn't have a tail, it generally is a caddis, a uh, uh, Yorkshire wet fly, soft tackle wet fly, typical caddis pu pupa imitation. And I think it's important at this point to talk about the differences between how these uh, insects emerge, because a wet fly is uh, for the emerger stage, for the most part. You fish it when you see emergers uh, being taken. Uh, you can fish it when you see dries coming off too and fish taking dries. You can still fish a wet fly. Um, generally speaking, if you're fishing a wet fly when you're not seeing any activity, it's just you being used as a searching pattern. And you could still catch fish doing that. Uh, there's nothing to say that you won't. But you think of wet flies as being something you fish when you see emerger rises. And we'll see some emerger rises on this video. Uh, and so I would be fishing in a caddis imitation like a... Um, partridge and wet or sorry partridge and orange as an example and what that imitates is the pupa uh, emerges from the rocks swims up to the surface and emerges as the adult caddis and takes off now those um, pupa generally are often this goldy orange color uh, yellowish grayish greenish and and when you think of Yorkshire wets, we've got that color range in it, don't we? Oh, yeah, and they're also dark ones, too. Dark grays, or almost black. So you've got that color range being uh, produced in Yorkshire wet patterns uh, to cover all these different pupa uh, colorations that you get with caddis. And they generally go up to the top, take off, and go. Uh, mayfly nymphs... Uh, when they emerge, they don't go through a pupil stage. They go straight from nymph to adult or subadult. And when they're moving up, they, they like just like caddis, they use gas in their skins to get some buoyancy to go up. Uh, but the difference between caddis and um, nymphs, uh, mayfly nymphs, is that mayflies often do, uh, try to swim back down again. So they go up, they go down, they go up, they go down. If you've ever heard of the Liza Ring Lift, that's what it imitates. So that's why giving some movement to your wet flies is not a bad idea because it can imitate that nymph, the mayfly nymph that's trying to get back down. It doesn't want to be up there where it's going to get eaten. So it fights its own bubbles. So this up and down motion, or back, and sometimes it'll be for us, it'll be just back and forth, but it's the idea it's motion. And that's what they're keying on. So let's get started. I, I'm starting in a small creek here, very narrow band of water that I'm fishing. And it's a very little tight run, you see it. It's not very big at all. And of course, there won't be any fish too far to the inside, so I'm not letting it sit there. Once it gets out of the current, I move it. Here I'm fishing the same current stream, only a little bit further upstream, doing exactly the same thing, letting it come into the slower water, and then when it gets starts to get shallow, I pick it up. and Though I'm not showing it here because I'm having to stay within range of the camera, I, I would normally be stepping downstream 
uh, what I'm doing instead is letting out a little bit of line between each cast, so I'm covering fresh water. And here I hook a fish and promptly lose it, of course. Okay, so I want to talk about that little bit there. These were very tightly angled swings. It asked swing, cast swing, cast swing, very, very tightly angled. There's a good current going through there. I didn't have to worry about giving it too much action. And you can see I did get to have a fish hook up very briefly. Um, so what you're trying to do there is just cover that run, both sides of it, the soft water to the far side, let the, the wet fly swing into the faster current, let it swing out, then pick it up and do it again. Move downstream or a little bit of line out so you're covering fresh water. So that's a classic example where it's just a down and across swing and I've adjusted the, the angle to fit the water. Here it's a different scenario. This is a much slower, deeper pool. And we'll see a couple of uh, emerger rises in a moment as we come across. There we go. There's one right there. And it's an emerger rise because it's just a bulge. And so that's what we're looking for when we are uh, fishing uh, a wet fly and we see those kinds of uh, rises. Uh, there's another one right in here. And you, you don't see any noses coming up. You don't see any little splashes. You don't see any bubbles. It's telltale emerger rise. And now I was just swinging, no motion. So what I did was as I swung by these fish, I start uh, to put in some motion, just pulsing, just pulse, pulse, pulse. And look what happens. As soon as I apply, I, those other fish ignored the fly. But now I'm putting pulsing, boom, fish on. So the motion was the key here. Now this is a totally different scenario. I saw a fish directly downstream of me. So how do I put a wet fly to that fish? So I cast high and pulled my rod back to create that lot of slack. So my cast fell quite close to me, but I had a lot of line to work with. And then I just started dropping my fly towards the fish, staying in contact, not putting a lot of slack on the water and then we get the fish hit and I want to show you how close my, I'm backing up here, look the fish broke the surface when it took the fly. It shows you how shallow that fly is running. I'm using a, a straight mono leader that you would use for dry fly fishing and the beauty of that mono leader is it keeps the fly close to the surface. If I wanted to really sink it I would have um, been using a, a fluorocarbon, a very thin fluorocarbon leader to try and get it down. Here, I'm, because there are merger rises, I'm using that uh, standard dry fly trout mono leader to keep the fly close to the surface. And you can see the fish actually breaks the surface when it takes the fly. And of course, I hook it up and uh, no, I won't have to worry about the landing. I did land it, by the way. None of these were big fish. All right, here is a perfect example of me fishing out a drift as far as I can go. And, you know, I see the splash. So I go, okay, fine, there's this fish over there. I start pulling in, bam, fish hits. So I wasn't even fishing to that fish. I was just, oh, better strip in some line to get a cast out to that fish I just saw. Rise, and I hook a fish. Shows you the motion worked. I stripped it upstream. Now, that Cahill wet could be uh, also seen to be a small bait fish as well when it's moving. And some of these wet flies I've got here are mayfly imitations, but if you move them, they can look like a small bait fish. So that's a little added plus for some of these flies. And okay, now I'm going to show you a, a reach mend and you can see how I put in that reach mend. And what I'm trying to do here is get a dead drift going. So no motion at all, no movement in the current. And what I want you to do is keep an eye on the tip of the line and you can see it travels more or less in a straight line. So let's take a look. If you watch the tip of the line, it doesn't move very much laterally. It goes mostly straight. I do recover a little bit of line to keep in contact, so there's no slack. So you get a very slight motion across stream, and then I reach as much as I possibly can to continue the dead drift, and I hook a fish. So it's a perfect example as I'm cat making a big reach mend, recovering some line to stay in contact so I don't have slack, uh, there was a very slight crossways motion, but very little, and I extend the drift as far as I possibly can, and 
the fish hits on the dead drift. So you can dead drift uh, wet flies without any problem at all, and fish will hit them when they're dead drifting. And sometimes they'll hit them when you transition from dead drifting to uh, starting to swing, and that motion at that moment causes them to hit. So that, that was an interesting one of targeting a fish. I knew that was the one I knew that was there. It was a following from the previous. Now another big reach mend, okay? And I'll, this one I wanted to show you how far I go to keep that dead drift going. And, and this one is an even better one. There's really no motion that tip laterally across the current. It's going straight downstream with the fly. And I'm just going to lean over and take it as far as I possibly can. It's ever so slightly starting to swing now. And what happens is I get a hit off, the, off camera and I fail the hook up. But it shows you that that process works. So just at the moment where it went from dead drift to starting to come across, the fish hit. Okay, here's another big reach mend. Same idea, I want to keep that uh, tip of that fl uh, fly line. I don't want it to go across current. I want the fly to go dead drift straight downstream. And I, I've put out more line because I'm trying to cover fish that are closer to the bank and nothing hits. I want to show you what I do here when nothing hits. I extend that dead drift as far as I can and then when I, there's no fish there I make a, a big pullback mend on the other side and now I drop tension. So I'm dropping the fly to the fish as it swings. So it's mostly going tracking downstream with a little bit of cross stream motion and I'll track that down and I'll let that one go right to the dangle and I'll pick it up and make another cast. So, in this particular drift, I didn't get any hits. But it gives you an example of how I'll work the dead drift and then turn it into a swing. And I'll use the pullback men to drop tension. So I'm dropping the fly back to the fish with a little bit of sideways motion. So you can see the various ways I combine motion or dead drifting or plane swinging. Mixed it up. And when I didn't get a fish, uh, a, you know, react to a, a swing, I would put in some motion. Um, sometimes they wanted it dead drifted. It was a mixed bag that day and uh, and you can see there were some dry fly rises and there were some emerger rises. So we had a, uh, and there were some uh, new stalkers in there and there was also some older fish. Um, there were some nice big fish in there as well too that day. So you've got a mixed bag of fish experience shall we say uh, between the, the new stalkers and the ones that have got a couple of winters under their belt. Uh, so all in all it, the, the idea behind what I'm showing you here is you know, be imaginative in your uh, approach to wet flies. Don't think automatically, cast 45 degrees downstream, swing, step, another 45, swing, step. There's more to wet fly fishing. You can target fish. You can see I targeted fish here. I saw a rise and I targeted it with a wet fly. More or less the same way you would target it with the dry. I could even target it with a streamer. I've done that before in this, you know, on this river, is I've seen rising fish and they've not liked my drives, so I put a small streamer on and whacked a whole bunch of fish. Uh, you know, when they're feeding, you'd be surprised what they're prepared to take. So give that some thought and also be aware that when you're looking at your, uh, your wet flies, that if you see a tail, it generally means uh, a mayfly nymph, and if you don't see a tail, it's a caddis fly, especially if he's got a big hackle. You, you've got some attractor patterns like this uh, grizzly king, and you've got you know this little guy here who could do double duty as a as a small bait fish imitation. So you know you've got some choices. Think about your wet flies. Again, just as I said before about streamers, just don't pick the pretty one out of your box. Look at what's going on. Try to figure out what's happening, and pick the the fly that's best suited for the job, and then fish it accordingly. And don't forget that business of mayflies going up and down, the lies ring left. It works for a reason. And you could even use a weighted nymph in this fashion and pull it up and let it drop, put it up, let it drop. Do the same thing. You're fishing it like a wet fly, not a nymph then. So it's wet fly thinking applied to nymphs, weighted nymphs. It all works. So, you know, use your imagination for the situation and have some fun with it and just don't be stuck in a rut of 45 down and across. Cheers.